TMCA channel. I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator and a cardiologist. So today, as a part of the daily clinical ECG discussion, I will be discussing the clinical ECG number 13. So before going ahead with the session, let me just inform you, I am discussing the entire ECG on 29th of January from basics to the advanced level. And this discussion will be on eGurukul app and it will be a live session from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And this session will be useful for the students who are third and fourth MBBS students, interns and post interns, and the students appearing for postgraduate entrance exams, senior and junior registrars. This session will definitely help you in understanding the concepts of the ECG. And I'll be also providing you the PDF once the session is finished. Having said this, let me discuss the clinical scenario of today. So, a 32 year old female with a medical history of significant hypertension and hypercholesterolemia presented to the emergency department complaining of chest pain for several hours after being emotionally distressed over her husband's behavior. Right? Husband is having the history of ethanol abuse, right? Arrogant behavior. So, uh, dominant behavior over the female so for which she is emotionally distressed and secondary to that he, she has developed chest pain for several years she described her chest pain as the pressure like located centrally without radiation the pressure was associated with diaphoresis that is profuse sweating her medications included hydrochlorothiazide and as well as simvastatin for hypercholesterolemia this is a brief and short history the blood pressure of the individual is 160 by 90 millimeters of mercury and cardiovascular examination, the individual had regular rate and rhythm, no rubs, no murmurs, no gallops. And this is the ECG of the patient. Now, what next? What will you do to this particular patient given the ECG as follows? So, I'll just describe the ECG in detail, right? So, she is a 32-year-old female, right? So, now, if you observe the ECG, what all the abnormalities you are able to make, up, make out? From V2 to V6, you have ST segment elevation and there is slight ST segment elevation even in 2-3 AVF. So, with this clinical scenario, when the patient presented to me, what I have done? I have done the cardiac biomarkers. The cardiac biomarkers were positive. I have done a 2D echo that was showing transient apical hypokinesia. Right, apical hypokinesia was there, and ECG showed ST segment elevation. So, with this scenario, what was my first uh, differential diagnosis? I have suspected the coronary artery disease. So, I have done a coronary angiogram, but to my suspicion, the coronary angiogram was not according to my suspicion. Coronary angiogram was absolutely normal. So, with the background history of chest pain, with Past history of hypertension and dyslipidemia, cardiac biomarkers were positive, 2D echo showing apical hypokinesia, ECG showing ST segment elevation. All that will make me to think of coronary artery disease. But surprisingly, the coronary angiogram was normal. Now, what should I do? What is my diagnosis? Let me tell you, it is not a patient with the coronary artery disease. So, he, the patient is having Takosubo cardiomyopathy which is also called broken heart syndrome. So, this is also called stress cardiomyopathy. And why is that due to? That is due to emotional stress and adrenergically mediated myocardial injury. Right? That is due to emotional stress and adrenergically mediated myocardial injury. So, I did not do any PCA. I did not give any thrombolytic agents. What I have done? I have discharged the patient on day two of admission I have asked her to continue the previous medications, thiazides and simvastatin, and along with that, I have asked her to take aspirin and as well as the clopidogrel for one month. So, what I want to tell you is, Takosubo cardiomyopathy, so I have some teaching points re regarding the Takosubo cardiomyopathy. So, Takosubo cardiomyopathy, it is always a diagnosis of exclusion. That means you have to rule out coronary artery disease first. And if only angiogram is normal, then we consider it to be a Takosubo cardiomyopathy, but definitely there should be a background history of emotional stress. 
And 2D echo will be showing apical hypokinesia, ECG will be showing ST segment elevation and cardiac biomarkers are elevated, but angiogram will be absolutely normal. And other important thing is secondary to emotional stress, what exactly will happen? There will be massive release of catecholamines. This particular catecholamines will go and act on the apex of the heart causing the apical hypokinesia. So, Elevation of plasma catecholamine levels and abnormal microvascular blood flow most likely plays an important role in the development of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. And overall, how is the prognosis in individual with the Takotsubo cardiomyopathy? The prognosis is good, right? It is favorable prognosis. Okay, so the individual will become normal within a few weeks. So it is a disorder with good prognosis. So what I want to tell you is all the patients with ST segment elevation cardiac biomarkers being positive, 2D echo showing hypokinesia. It doesn't mean always it should be a coronary artery disease. So you have to do a coronary angiogram to rule out the coronary artery disease. If the coronary angiogram is normal and if the plasma catecholamine levels are elevated, that is suggestive of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. And plasma catecholamine levels being elevated, you should also rule out pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma, which is a tumor of adrenal medulla, there also there is massive release of catecholamines. So you should rule out pheochromocytoma in this patient again. So this is a clinical scenario of the day, which I wanted to tell you about the Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, which is also called stress cardiomyopathy, which is also called broken heart syndrome. So this is for today. Having said this, let me remind you once again, on 29th of January, I'll be discussing the entire ECG all the way from basics to the advanced level. Attending this session will definitely help you in solving the clinical emergencies regarding the cardiology. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow once again with the new clinical scenario.